jump straight into it as it's easy for environment and climate change in your sing issue here. What are the key environmental and climate change priorities for your county and how does waste management fit into those priorities? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Trevor, before I start off, I want to thank you for having me in the show tonight. And I want to convey greetings from His Excellency, the Governor of Wasingishu, Dr. Jonathan B., a.k.a. Kutumoja. I want to say you are all welcome, and he has extended his greetings to you. And, and he has said Eldoret will be the fifth city in Kenya soon. We shall receive our confirmation on 8th of August. So, karibuni nyote. Eldoret. Uh, Trevor, yes, there are policies that the county is looking at in terms of environmental conservation and, environment, and solid waste management in the town. Now, the county looks at the Sustainable Waste Management Act of 2022, which has been set to be domesticated by all counties in the next two years. So in Wasingishu and in Eldoret Town, we look at waste as a source of business, first and foremost. It's only that we have not managed to turn this into reality, but we are working on it. And we are saying this act will help us to ensure that all the solid waste and the environmental degradation that we see in the town and in the environs of the town is really going to be turned into a business with the help of this partnership of Kenya Climate Innovation Center. Yeah. But was it, why has it been so difficult to turn it into a business like you just admitted yourself? Yes. Uh, it's what challenges it's, are you facing? Yeah, it is really the starting point. Yeah. Because when you say you turn uh, waste garbage into business, there has to be a starting point because people in the households or in the neighborhoods of Eldoret Town really consider it waste as waste. But in the county, in the eyes of the county and the eyes of the environment where I sit, we think this can be a good business. So this is what um, I, I want to say. Mm -hmm. um, people must be made to be aware so there has to be public awareness. Mm -hmm. There has to be education of the people to know that uh, waste can be a business in the following ways. One, we need to have um, waste in our household level segregated yeah. into organic, inorganic, into all the various types, which we are not doing. And so when people come together to understand that, solid waste is a business, it is when they know where to take it. In some places, waste is actually bought from the people. It's bought from the people, but here in Kenya, in, in Wasingishu, in Eldoret, we pay people to take the waste to the dump site. So it's the other way around. So it's all the concept of actually making the people understand the business in solid waste. Okay. We'll, we'll delve into that for a bit, but let me bring in Solomon first on this. And in terms of NEMA, what challenges are you facing in terms of regulation and implementation, especially when it comes to waste management? <clears throat> uh, thank you, Trevor, and thank you for uh, this forum. Uh, for us as NEMA, we are a regulator. <clears throat> so basically, uh, what is happening in your single issue and many other count uh, counties it is in the country is one lack of infrastructure. So most of the counties, are like uh, the way Waziri has put it, so probably we are able to segregate in our homes, but do we have the infrastructure? Do we have the compacted uh, vehicles to transport where we can segregate the, the organic, where we can segregate uh, the recyclables, uh, and these other ways? So mostly uh, is a lack of infrastructure. Secondly, is priority. Do we have the priority? How do we prioritize the environmental issues? You get most of the budgets in the country, in the county. Our environment, I think, is given the lowest uh, level. So those are uh, some of the challenges. And also, we have 
I can put it like the porous borders, we are, we are getting uh, the banned plastic, uh, the flimsy bags that were banned in this country in 2017. So this becomes a challenge, more so in Eldoret. We have our neighbors that are the, the, the borders are not, they are porous. So those are, are basically most of the challenges. And uh, I think as an authority, yeah. we're trying to work on them, uh, being assisted by the regulations. Now, how can they be addressed, in your view? What needs to be put in place? Is this a money problem? Is it a resource problem? Is it an awareness problem? Where, where does the gap lie? Uh, what I can say first is the attitude. Which attitude as uh, members of the public, as Kenyans, we have? We are still buying uh, may, uh, milk using the polythene bags. We are still uh, agreeing or going to a shop and also uh, going to a shop and you take in that paper. If you change our mentality, say we refuse plastic bags, say we refuse this type of, uh, we try and recycle what we have. Go to the shop, take a bottle of, uh, uh, a, 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 a glass bottle, go and collect milk. But for us, the first thing is change of attitude. Mm. Secondly, is a close working relationship. How can you work closely? The national government, the county government, members of the public, uh, civil society and all that, so that we can promote, we can bring that uh, holistic approach uh, okay. to waste management. Okay. Yes. Blessing, you're one of the people already taking advantage of this. What are some of the innovative waste management solutions that you've seen around where you are, and how can that be cascaded to other different counties as well? Mm. Okay, Trevor, thank you for having me here. We as all Uganda Road Enterprise, we do the service of garbage collection in the community. So the waste management solution, innovative waste management solution that we have done, it is that when we collect the garbages or the waste from the community, first of all, we sort them out. We separate the recyclables and the rest. Then we sell So them. you have to separate this on your own first? Yes, so they yes. don't come already separated from no, the community? No, we separate them. Okay. After collecting them, we separate them. Then after separating them, we get the recyclables and sell them to the people who recycle. That is the plastics, metals, papers. We sell them. And the rest now, we dump them. We transport them and dump them in the dump sites. Okay. Yeah, that's the solution. Is there a way that this can be made better from what you've seen? Oh, okay. Uh, the way it can be made better, it is uh, when the members of the public segregate the waste before we collecting them from them. That is, they segregate them, they separate them from the paper, the metals, the organic, because actually we do not sort them out 100%. Mm -hmm. Them storing in the gunny bags or the beans, it could have been better. Yeah. So that the time we collect them, it is just selling the recycles and the recyclables and uh, transporting the other ones. The, that is the organic. Okay. To the dump Let me bring in Jabez on this. Jabez, you run a, a program called SWIFT, that is Sustainable Waste Innovation for a Future in Transition. What has been the progress and the impact of SWIFT program in Wasingishu 1 and all the other counties as well? Because what you're focusing on here is how do we turn waste into money? That's essentially the central question here. How do we turn it into money? But what has been the impact of SWIFT? Yeah, thanks, Trevor. Um, first of all, I think I would like to appreciate the county government of Wasingishu. We've had a very good working relationship with them, them and we've been implementing several programs with them over the recent years, uh, some in agriculture, and now the waste management program through the SWIFT. At KCIC, we truly believe that the fight against climate change can be won at the intersection of innovation and entrepreneurship. And we do that by supporting enterprises, climate innovators that are coming up with solutions that directly are combating climate change, be it mitigation or adaptation. Uh, specifically for the waste uh, program that is called SWIFT. Uh, we are looking at doing two uh, types of support. So one is to enable enterprises to build sustainable businesses within the waste management sector yeah. in line with transitioning them from the linear economy into a circular economy. So how can they be able to adapt circular principles and how can they build their businesses for scale? We are also uh, supporting the county government to be able to strengthen policy frameworks at county level. Uh, as Waziri has rightly put it, we have the Sustainable Waste Management Act of 2022, 
and uh, we know that it is supposed to be domesticated, not just here in Wasingishu, but also to be domesticated in all other counties. And the act provides that that should be done two years since uh, 2022. Yeah. But unfortunately, so we're already running that, late now. Yeah, unfortunately, that has happened. And so the conversation and the discussion we would like to have is what are the challenges that the counties are facing? Why is it that they are not able to bring and do legislation policies at the county level yeah. that can enable, can enable them to be able to manage the waste? At KCAC, we strongly believe that innovation comes before policy. So blessing and other enterprises yeah. in, the, uh, in Uasingishu and in Kenya, they're already innovating and they're coming up with solutions that are directly tackling uh, with the waste challenge, uh, the waste management challenge. Yeah. So how can we create an enabling environment that allows for them to be able to manage the waste, but also build sustainable businesses that are creating jobs and creating employment opportunities for the youth in the country. Yeah. So for Wasingishu County, uh, we are piloting this in five counties, and we are glad that Wasingishu is one of the five counties, the others being Nairobi, uh, Mombasa, Nakuru, uh, and Kisumu, and finally Eldoret. And we want this discussion not just to be looked at from one point of view. We want it to be looked at all the sector players that are managing waste. And we want to change the narrative from looking at waste as waste and turning it to a resource and putting money actually into people's pockets. Mm -hmm. And how many enterprises have you supported under SWIFT and how many do you intend to support? Yeah. And how do you support them? Do you just come and get people like Blessing and give them money or what happens? Yeah. So the SWIFT program is a three-year program and uh, it's seeking to support uh, 110 enterprises in the country. 110? Uh, 110. Okay. We have already onboarded 57 of these enterprises. Okay. Uh, we worked with all the county governments and different stakeholders at the beginning of the year, and we launched a call. We did a sensitization just to create awareness around the opportunity that exists within the waste management sector. As, you, as you've rightly put it, the opportunity is estimated to be around 52 billion US dollars. But the sector is highly informal and there's lack of policies and legislations that then allow for the, the people to tap into the opportunity that this exists. Um, the intention of the program is to support build the capacity of enterprises such as old Uganda Road Enterprise here. And we do that by offering them business advisory support. So how can they properly model their businesses for scale? Yeah. We give them technical assistance in terms of how do they do product development? How do they test and prepare that to go to market? We also support them with mentorship. We understand that they have some technical expertise, yeah. but there's a skills gap. So we attach a mentor who walks the journey of building their capacity. Okay. And also we can't talk about this conversation without putting some money into their businesses. And so for the early stage businesses, we give them a proof of concept grant to be able to commercialize their ideas. And for those that are a bit uh, grown, we give them concessionary debt. Yeah. So something that they can be able to afford without necessarily distorting what is already in the market. Okay. Uh, and already we've uh, identified 57 of those through yeah. the call that we ran. Uh, we'll be able to support them over an incubation period of uh, 18 months, uh, so from now until the end of that period. And we will try and tailor make solutions that are directly speaking to the challenges that they are facing. Okay. Uh, Waziri, you mentioned yes. something about awareness and segregation mm. of the waste at the source, yes. which is at the household mm -hmm. level. Yeah. And I'm looking at the Sustainable Waste Management Act here, mm. and that really falls in your doorstep mm. as the county government. Yes. Why is there a challenge there? How come you've not been able to create enough awareness? How come you've not been able to segregate and tell people that they need to segregate their waste in certain patterns at the homestead yes. level? Yes. Uh, thank you, Trevor. I think uh, the county government uh, of uh, His Excellency the Governor is working on this as an ongoing work in progress. So we are looking at how we can now domesticate by creating a legal framework for people to really be involved. First of all, if we can get sensitization, part of that sensitization is like tonight. Yeah. People are seeing and they are getting aware. And so if people are sensitized to know that such a thing exists, like business in, in West, 
is very important. Mm -hmm. So what the county is doing is to look at ways of documenting to know really in terms of uh, solid waste, how much are we looking at it? And so I want to say uh, this county, the, count, the, 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 the solid waste amounts in, in, in Eldoret City is around uh, 300, is over about 380,000 metric tons per year. Yeah. And so this is very, very much uh, a threat if the county government does not put in place policies, structures, and strategies to ensure this is, is, is addressed. Number two, uh, this, town, this town, which will be a city, is growing very fast. Uh, we have a city market, which is going to have 10,000 people. We have the EPZ, which is going to have another 10,000 people. We have the affordable housing, which is going to have like 20,000 homes, houses. We have the Kipes, which is at Moiben. It's going to cause what we call rural to urban migration. And so the government of Wasingishu is looking at possible ways of addressing this uh, requirement of uh, sustainable solid waste management in the next one year or two years so that we beat the deadline. The other one, of course, is the number of, uh, we have two stadiums. We have Kipchoge Stadium, we have 64 Stadium. When this is going to be done, I want to say that, Trevor, this uh, city will be a city where there's going to be a lot of influx of people coming from all adjacent counties, and they will move here. So we are aware of the fact that we need to handle solid waste in the shortest time possible by way of ensuring there is a legal framework. For example, what the NEMA uh, county, director, county director said, people don't have the infrastructure. They don't have uh, what you call the beans, the money to segregate, even if they wanted to, to segregate the, the waste into the various categories of waste. Yeah. People, again, the, the technology, we need technology transfer. I want to say, Trevor, the governor and other governors went to uh, Accra, went to Ghana. Yeah. And they've come up with a technology where they've learned that it is possible. And, and they have actually, we are in the process now of ensuring that technology from Ghana uh, is really being implemented especially as we look at the number of people coming into Eldoret as a city. So we are aware that there's going to be need for all types of social amenities, including addressing solid waste, liquid waste, addressing the need for water, addressing the need for all types of infrastructure, lights, paved roads, and all that. Yeah. So we are not looking at solid waste as just one thing. Yeah. His Excellency the Governor is looking at the total holistic approach of how to manage uh, services in Eldoret City yeah. coming, coming for, going forward so that we are able to uh, accommodate. Because right now, the population of uh, uh, the entire Eldoret is around a million point two, but we are aware that people have been moving into Eldoret and, yeah. and, and in the urban and peri-urban areas, houses are coming up apart from the affordable housing. Yeah. So we are looking at a lot about close to, in the next 10 years, close to about 500,000 people moving into Eldoret. So what that means is there's going to be a lot of waste, yeah. solid waste, liquid waste, and, and so on and so on. But, but, but keeping that in mind, yes. Waziri, is the county then prepared? Is there any plan to build even a recycling plant or a waste management plant? Because have you seen that in the county integrated development plan or even the ADP, which is yes. the annual yeah. development plan? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Trevor, the county is ready. What the county has done, the county has set aside Lorua dam site. It is actually 19 and a half acres for EPR so that the sustain, sustainable solid waste can be managed from yeah. Lorua, which is uh, going to be like 19 acres. Right now, again, in the dump site in uh, Uruma, we are going to have waste to be uh, like what the lady is doing of yeah. the Uganda pro program, is to see how we can manage. But again, Trevor, you need to know that 
money is scarce. Mm. And uh, it's not only for Eldoret or uh, Wasingishu County. So we are looking at how we can uh, uh, work with partners. Partners like uh, Kenya uh, Innovation, Innovation Center, Center yes. Yes, KCIC. And uh, we have also talked to the Swedish, we have talked to the Belgians, we are talking to other people who are interested mm -hmm. in coming to commercialize. Okay. Because like he said in Swift, uh, the idea of getting people to know the value of waste, yeah. first of all, is very key. Okay. Apart from even the county putting infrastructure and structures in terms of policies and structures to manage this. Okay. this uh, I'd like uh, to open the floor for comments or questions, but before I do that, Solomon, with that statistics that uh, Waziri is giving, the influx of people and more waste going to be generated, how do you ensure compliance at the level of businesses and households? <coughs> Uh, thanks, Trevor. Uh, for us as NEMA, as a regulatory authority, uh, one, we have uh, regulations, uh, policies and regulations that we use to ensure compliance. Uh, remember, we have the Kenya uh, Constitution, Kenyan Constitution. Uh, we have uh, Articles 42, uh, 69 and 70 that basically, like 42, gives us power to a clean and healthy environment. We, uh, you're entitled to a clean and healthy environment. You go to 69 and 70, 70, that's where you have the powers. You can take somebody to court uh, to ensure that your rights are not infringed on. We have the National uh, Waste Management Strategy of 2015. That one, again, it tries to teach and uh, create awareness where, where we were, where we are now, and where we are heading to. So it gives all those guidelines. Then we have uh, MCA. In MCA, we have several regulations. We have the uh, Waste Management Regulation of 2006. We have Water Quality Act of 2006. And then we have the EIA EA regulations of 2003. Those are the guiding factors that tries to assist the counties. And we are working closely with the county government in ensuring that as the population increases, that component of uh, environmental impact assessment and audit uh, for, like for the, 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 the 19 acres they bought, we are working closely with them. So we, we want to establish a material recovery facility, MRF, where uh, people, uh, groups like uh, the group where she works, can go there, do the sorting of uh, the waste uh, from now, the segregated waste at our homes. So those are the things that as people, the population increase, we want to f uh, ensure they, they are complied with. Yeah. The other thing also, I uh, do audit of the regulated, regulated facilities, where we have uh, we have a list, an inventory of all regulated facilities in the county and all over uh, in the country. So we usually do spot check and inspect what they are doing, what type of waste is coming from them, how are they treating the waste, are they recycling, are they, uh, are they throwing it away. So we monitor all those. Again, we have uh, what we call a resp incident resp uh, response to incidents. Yeah. We have all those structures that we go uh, the type of incident. Is it a major incident? Is it a significant? Is it a minor incident? So that we try to, for a major uh, incident, where there is uh, pollution of the environment, yeah. there is a time limit that we try to, uh, to limit ourselves and the timelines. We give the timelines. And also, as NEMA, we do prosecutions. So when the worst comes to the worst, you don't comply, we prosecute. Yeah. So we try and, uh, and enforce uh, what you're supposed to do as an authority. So, so what happens? Because there are some people who say that most of the culprits are slightly ahead of NEMA. By the time you show up, the damage is already done. Is this an issue of resource or what is the challenge? Because the police have what we call extended producer responsibility. So that before the damage, mm -hmm. uh, before the damage is done, already we foresee this product from the manufacturer to the end product. Yeah. So we are trying to we call it political pay principle in environment, okay. so that the one who polluted the environment is made to cover for the damages. Okay. So we respond. Nowadays we have enough. At least we are getting up. We're getting the enough facilities for quick response. And that's why I say that's why I say that we have the rapid response yeah. initiative in Emma, okay. so that way we respond very fast to incidents. All right. Yes. Blessing. Yes. You. If I add something which uh, I need to enhance what yeah. you have said. Okay. Um, you asked about what the county is doing in terms of its level of preparedness yeah. for this. I want to say that the uh, county government has enacted 
a rural, rural water and sanitation company. So 2022, the act is, is, is now implementable. I want to say that uh, that company is in force and it's ready and it is running. Now, what this company is doing is to decongest Eldoret City in the future. The government foresaw a situation where, as we become a city, a lot of people are going to come into town. So what the, 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 the law says, there's going to be a management of peri-urban areas that are adjacent to uh, Eldoret City now into the future. For example, for each uh, sub-county, there's going to be a city, a, 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 a municipality. Mm -hmm. And His Excellency the Governor has, uh, is going to sign into law the act that uh, creates the six, sub, uh, six municipalities in the six sub-counties. And uh, just to say for people to know, yeah. uh, there is Tarbo and the environs of Jerame, there is uh, Moist Bridge, there is Ziwa and the environs of uh, Machine and uh, Sirikwa, there is Moiben, there is uh, Ban Forest in Ainapwe uh, sub county, yeah. there is uh, Keses and uh, Chapteret area, and so these six sub uh, in sub county municipalities mm -hmm. will be run by the company. Okay. So the company will be responsible for waste uh, water treatment, okay. which is the sewer. It will be responsible for solid waste. Okay. It will be responsible for the management of all municipality uh, services in those six. Uh, municipalities of that of, of washing issue. Okay. So this is to say that uh, we will decongest the city because people uh, will be attracted to move to the nearest municipality from where they come from, mm -hmm. the rural areas. Yeah. And that is why I was saying earlier, the uh, rural to urban migration yeah. will be stemmed by these municipalities coming up in strategic parts of, this, of the county. Okay. Yeah, so that is a way you are asking uh, what, what are you doing. How you prepared you are, okay. Yes. And Blessing, let me bring you in on this. You know, the people who are watching are just wondering, from the onset, we said this is a 52 billion US dollar industry. How do they make the money? You are a waste entrepreneur yourself. What challenges have you faced and how did you overcome them? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Trevor. The challenges we have faced as an enterprise, one of them is some of the clients that we are having, they're not compliant. So the services we offer to the community, uh, they pay us, the clients pay us. Now the residents of the community are the ones who pay us. Because we secure this tender from the municipality through private-public partnership. So it is the residents who are paying us. And so we have clients who are not compliant. And this, uh, this is the money that we, that we use to sustain the enterprise. Uh, the other challenge is, as an enterprise, we pay for license, and it's not only one license. There are a lot of licenses we're paying for, such as for NEMA, for transportation, for the one as an enterprise. So we have a lot of licenses that we're paying for. The other, challenge is, the other challenge is that roads leading to the dump sites, they're poor. So they affect the transportation of the waste that we're taking to the dump site. Uh, the way we have tried to overcome some of the challenges is we have tried to create awareness to the community uh, about waste management and that they should be paying them. Uh, and there, there has been a positive change, a bit that is. Okay. Yeah, just to mention a few. But there is money in this waste in industry, right? Yeah, there is. <laughs> <laughs> there is money, yeah. There, there, there is, there is money. money there. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we bring in Jabez on this. Jabez, the, the goals for SWIFT program and how you envision its impact in the waste management in Kenya. What is your vision and how do you want to see this? What is your vision of success at the end of it all? Uh, thanks, Trevor. Um, I think just to help us uh, answer that question and try to put it into context, if you walk around and if you have discussions with people within uh, the waste management sector and you ask them what challenges they are facing, they'll talk about uh, awareness creation. So, for example, if we talk about the act that we are all mentioning here, 
how many of us have had time to read it and internalize it. It clearly stipulates what is the, what is the mandate of the national government at ministry level. It outlines what is the responsibility of the authority. It outlines what is the responsibility of the county. So creating awareness and forums that then foster people to be able to understand that is quite important. We've talked about skills gap and trying to build the capacity of innovators within the space, be it enterprises, be it waste pickers, be it associations. So building that skills gap. There's an element of financing, the waste management sector, for it to be able to grow and to tap into the opportunity that you're speaking. There is financial, um, there is financial commitment that needs to be done there. At KCIC, we are doing that by supporting enterprises to be able to improve their efficiency, to be able to help them to adopt technology. But more importantly also, there is the element of data and the data that is around waste management. So it, the, the, the act stipulates and gives the mandate of provision of data for the counties to the authority. But if you look at the sources of data, and for example, um, we say Nairobi produces about 4,000 tons of waste a day, but that is sourced from a research that was done in 2010. And it's probable that that number has probably doubled or even, or even tripled over the last um, 14 years. So how can we resource the counties to be able to uh, provide data? Because we believe that data then provides, uh, clearly stipulates what's the opportunity. The opportunity then stipulates policy, and policy then stipulates the investments that can be able to drip in into the sector. So the act provides for incentivizing. What, what incentives needs to be put in place so that me, as a producer of waste at my house level, I can be able to do segregation. Currently, there is no incentive whatsoever if uh, in fact, it is a cost. In most cases, you'll find that probably all of us are paying for garbage collection. But essentially, it should be the other way around. We should be paid to segregate uh, waste at source. And therefore, that's that the civic education that needs to happen and the incentive around that, yeah. and that tone has to be set from the ministry level, at, at, at the ministry level. For waste, uh, for the SWIFT program particularly, we are interested in building the capacity of the five counties that I've mentioned. We want to help them and support them to be able to strengthen their policy frameworks. And we do that by helping them to be able to domesticate uh, the Sustainable Waste Management Act. We know it is there. We are asking question why, questions around why it's not working. But also we are asking how can we work as different players within the waste management sector to be able to tailor, make solutions yeah. that are relevant to the county government. So Could we it not be working because of the, the gap between policy and reality? Because when you say segregation at the home state level, yeah. it means I have to separate my garbage into different categories. Exactly. Do we have different lorries going to come and collect them in, at different times? Yeah. How many times have you seen three different lorries walking, running, moving yeah. into the same estate? Yeah. Is it because the policies and the reality don't go together? That's the reason why it's hard to implement this. There is, there is that, but also even before we talk about the reality on ground, um, there is, the, the, the act provides for that to be done. It provides that a licensed waste collector should be able to, uh, working together with the county, they should be able to do the color coding, for example, of the beans, to know what goes into green, what goes into yellow, what goes into red. Yeah. There's also the element of cost. For example, all of us get one waste paper per bin. Mm -hmm. We don't get three of them. And so, and probably it's, you get a certain number for a certain period of time. So if you are to be able to segregate that, what is the incentive for me doing that? Yeah. But also the reality that then the incentive does, has to start from somewhere else. What is the incentive of the licensed waste collector to be able to give you three bins? or to be able to send three, three rollies. Lo, rollies. Yeah. What, is it, what is it adding or what value are they getting out yeah. of it? And so for us to be able to tap into the opportunity, we also have to look at how we sensitize and incentivize people to be able to tap into the opportunity. And when you talk about domestication, those are the realities on ground that at county level that we need to talk and discuss. And as we build people's capacity also, see how we can incentivize them to be able to do that. All right.
Yeah, I have to take a quick break when we come back. I'll open the floor to questions and concerns from the audience here. But yes, very briefly. Let's just say it very briefly. Yeah. Is to say that you're asking, can, can, can we then have three lorries, for example, following each other to yeah. pick different types of waste? The answer is that when uh, there is a cross section between um, innovation and enterprise or business, it's going to be easy because the lorries that will be acquired by the county or the county will require that businessmen or people who will be ferrying the west yeah. will be having lorries that already have been inbuilt with the bins that are color coded so that as they pick from the households they are picking and loading onto the different types of Section. spaces yeah. in the lorry so it's going to be very easy Okay. So, and again, this is business. All right. Which uh, we, which we yes. Color coding. Yes. Color coding already. You know, we've already developed the colors. They are at the CS level. Yes. Only for gazettement. I mm -hmm. will have blue. Blue will be for recyclables. Mm -hmm. They are yet to be gazetted, though. They are yet yes. to be gazetted. But they've already been developed. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have a green uh, for. Uh, organic. Organic. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have a black for these other ways. For this. Okay. So within mm -hmm. no time, I think. Those color codes will be gazetted, yeah. then we'll be having those separate bins at separate places. But even after they're gazetted, will the bins be at the home That's state? why we need input of regulation, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> oh. support. And, and the incentive that he was talking the about. PPP, okay. public, public, uh, private partnership, so All that right. we can support the yes. counties and All right. the whole function. I have to take a quick public break here. When we come back, yes. we'll continue this conversation and I'll toss it to the audience as well to pose their questions and concerns in terms of the challenges. How do we take advantage of this? circular economy that is worth 52 billion US dollars. How do we make the money while also ensuring that the environment is taken care of? That is the conversation we're having. We'll see you in just a bit.